Headlines say Tudor released a Submariner, but is this a Submariner? I would say ignore that for a second. Let's talk through what the watch is, where it fits, and whether or not it is the kind of watch that they're saying that it is. Now, when we ignore the naming conventions of if it's a Submariner or not, when we look at this versus the Rolex Submariner or any of Tudor's other dive watches, which is the best option? That's kind of what I've been asked a lot. Now, if you're not up to date on the hype train uh, for watches this year, welcome. Uh, one of this year's is the Tudor Black Bay 41 in black with white accents. So this is the third generation of the Black Bay line that came out last year where they did a red bezel and everything else was the same. Now it's in all black and white. This third generation's largest improvement was the fact that the third gen case adopts a new thickness, thankfully. So this used to be, the Black Bay line used to be slab sided, 14.7 millimeters. This is now 13.6 millimeters. So it wears a lot more like Rolex Submariner or a lot of other dive watches. Now, strangely, the movement inside is the exact same movement that's been in the Black Bay the entire time, the MT5602, except now it's called the MT5602-U. And the only difference is that the dash U means they took an existing MT5602 that's in all the Black Bays and they sent it to Metas for testing. They got it back and it gets a U attached to the end. Now I've done a whole video on Metas, but this is one of those marketing things you see in luxury watches that's a bit overblown, I think. And the hype is certainly here on YouTube. There are six tests that are part of Metas. And the one that impresses everyone is the 1.5 Tesla or 15,000 Gauss MRI machine, essentially, that the watch can withstand. Now the silicon hairspring that's inside is how the movement can handle that amount of magnetic force because it's an amagnetic silicon hairspring. And there's a good chance though that if you own a watch that has a silicon hairspring, it probably can pass Metas as well. So that's just something to note. Either way, if you avoid the Metas part, specs are on the screen. It's a thinner black bay now with a desaturated color. So why is this all over the news? When it first came out, I did a release talking about all the new watches and it didn't really spark my interest. But the simple reason why this is popular right now and everyone's talking about it is because this is the closest we're probably ever going to get. We all know that the Tudor Submariner is likely never coming back. And if you don't already know that, unfortunately, I don't ever see a day where it returns. See, Tudor spent a decade now separating their model lines from being exact copies of Rolex with their Pelagos line and with their vintage inspired versions of Rolex and Tudor's back catalog. And that is mainly with this Black Bay collection. So if the true Tudor sub isn't coming back, then why is everyone calling this the Tudor Submariner? And I think that's because we want it to be, you know, like the Submariner is a classic design. It's popular, has been for decades, and it's ubiquitous with watch collecting and fashion. The problem is that one, this little guy costs you about $10,000. Now the no date is obviously a little bit less than that, but still it's about $9,100 plus tax if you have sales tax. And most people aren't willing to pay that just for a nice dive watch. But two, you may not be able to source one from an AD without some work or some prior purchases. That being said, Tudor has done similar tactics recently as well on a lot of their model lines where you can't really get it unless you know the AD or have built a good relationship. Still, with the contemporary 41 millimeter case size, black bezel, black dial, standard dive watch, things that people want, the contemporary CNC bracelet with the tight tolerances and an adjustable clasp, not to mention a rock solid movement inside, it's no wonder people are interested in this watch because it's half the price of the Rolex Submariner. Plus you can get it on a Jubilee or a five link bracelet, whatever you wanna call it. Although this is quite different than a standard Jubilee. Now I recently asked everyone on Instagram, follow me there if you wanna chime in before a review, if they had any questions before I filmed this review. And overwhelmingly the questions were about buying preference questions or comparisons, this or the Rolex sub, uh, this plus a sub, or this versus the Pelagos FXD. Does it live up to the hype and is it a keeper? So one at a time. First is hype. And as I explained, YouTube and news are oriented around the new and the flashy and the interesting. And so the more there's hype around a piece, the more people are gonna talk about it. That is just one of the truths of news media and YouTube in general. So this year, brands did very little innovative in my opinion, and something had to be talked about. And Tudor has been year after year, had at least one watch to talk about from Watches and Wonders. And while the Tudor GMT is something people like or don't like, this seems to be that watch that people are talking about. Now, is it a game changer? No, I mean, it's a black dial, black bezel watch. And for me, it looks and feels a lot like a 58, just a little bit bigger. That being said, it does swap the seconds hand snowflake over to a lollipop seconds hand. 
So if that's interesting for you, obviously that is something that's out there. The reason why I think this is interesting is because it hits that sweet spot of what people are looking for, which is a versatile monochromatic watch at a great price point. So that leads into the comparisons. Compared to the Black Bay 58, it's barely any different. I prefer the 58 in either blue or gilt because I'm trying as hard as possible not to keep buying black dial watches, but that is my preference. Either way, that being said, the sizing on this 41 does fit my 6.75 inch wrist a little bit better. Uh, while I love the size of the 58, it was a tad compact at times where this seems to spread out over the top of my wrist a lot more comfortably. Now, I would say try both on. It's totally subjective, the aesthetic question, but the movement difference or size difference shouldn't be much of a factor. That being said, I do love the knurled crown that's added to this as opposed to the actual 58 crown because it's much easier to grab. My old 58, I had difficulty sometimes operating it effectively. That being said, most of the new Tudor dive watches are now getting this new crown, so you could probably wait a little bit and the new 58s, whenever they come out, will probably have this updated crown. Now, compared to the Pelagos line, they're actually quite different. The Pelagos is much less versatile. I think, honestly, the Submariner and a Pelagos, or even this and a Pelagos, could very easily live in a collection together because they are quite different. This watch has some shine on it, especially with this five link bracelet and the applied indices add a little bit extra interest. It can be flashy, which I love. And I think you have to be honest with yourself about how you want to feel with this watch on or where you want to wear it. It's really a question of if you want that little bit of flashy or if you're going full tool oriented. Now I thought early on, I wanted to go full tool watch. I was all about purpose and practicality because I respected that mindset but the longer that I've done this, the more I see that I like a little bit of glimmer. I like some shine. I like some interest to the watch. And so that tool oriented aesthetic, I think is only good in my collection for a couple watches. And I think this is obviously much more versatile because it has that little bit of element. But again, that's a matter of taste. Now compared to the Pelagos line, I've only worn it on this Jubilee style bracelet. It does wear pretty similarly to the 39 in size. Um, it is a little bit heavier because it's a steel watch compared to the titanium of the Pelagos 39. The Pelagos 39 disappears and I loved that about it. This feels great, but you don't forget you're wearing it. Now compared to the FXD, this is very different. The FXD may only be one millimeter wider, but it feels much bigger. Lighter, yes, but bigger. So it depends on if you wanna ever wear it on a bracelet. Now I like wearing my watches on bracelets, so it would be important to me to have that sort of option in a watch like this. Now, if you want a full scale tool oriented watch, you don't wanna dress up with it, and you prefer the lightness of titanium, go with the Pelagos. If you want a bit of flash, you want a fancy feeling with the watch, go 58 or this model line. Now, if you want monochrome and flashy, well then this is kind of your only option right now from a dive watch, from Tudor. Now, what about Rolex? What about the Samaritan? That has to be the most asked question. It was all around the sub. And these watches are surprisingly quite different despite what appearances would seem online. The sub is a nice modern watch, but the bezel gives it a feeling of jewelry, uh, to be sure. It has a lot more flash, I would say, than the Black Bay. And that extra flash and brand name and all the other feelings that come with the modern sub does come at twice the price. Now, the feeling on wrist, does feel more comfortable on the Black Bay, especially on this Jubilee. It's lighter and I don't feel the crown digging into my wrist as often as I have felt on the Submariner. The logo placement is still not necessarily my favorite given how the Tudor logo really hugs the Canon pinion, but if that's forgiven, it raises a question of taste, time, and value. If you want the sub, get one. If you think that this watch will scratch the itch, I hate to break it to you, it probably won't. I've had in this studio almost every Tudor dive watch that they sell. The FXD Marine Nationale, the Pelagos 39, the Pelagos 42, the Black Bay 58 in blue and in black, and now this, as well as the Black Bay 54. Now for me, all of these Black Bay watches feel really similar. And I knew over time that I wanted a sub. I knew it early on, but I tried to tell myself I didn't. Basic, I know, but there was a nagging in my head that really just didn't go away. So. Here's the sub. Now I've had the sub for two months and I love it more than I expected. And I think a lot of that comes from my realization that I like that little bit of interest. Now, is it worth paying twice the amount of the Black Bay logically? Of course not, right? Even a $5,000 watch is crazy if we pause for a moment to talk about it. But emotionally, that kid in us that wants the cool shiny toy, 100% for me. That being said, 
This Black Bay is a fantastic watch, and I think it's a much needed added offering to their collection. It fixes the slab style case while still offering a lot of the aesthetic that most people want in a monochrome nature. It redefines the model line to fix many of their prior mistakes and it puts a popular size and color as part of it. It is a, a Submariner, no, but it's probably as close as a modern Tudor is likely going to get. But what do you guys think? Till next time, peace.